Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're gonna to look at another one of the security Linux distributions. Uh, this one actually came to my attention on the Discord server. I hadn't previously heard of it. And uh, this is actually coming from a uh, group, I guess, Eagle Eye. I don't know much about this particular group, but uh, if you actually land on their main page, which is digi77.com, they have Kodashi, they have the Stealth Walker, uh, they have SSLI and Folder Monitor. There's a few other things here. So their marketing is very much like they're selling software, although these are certainly free resources to download. And so what they're trying to pitch here is that this is going to be a better alternative to Tails, ultimately because they're running everything through a VPN. And uh, this is where we have a little bit of a philosophical disagreement where I'm not under the camp that everybody has to run everything through a VPN. Uh, but if you are in that camp, you'll probably find this Linux distribution probably a little bit better of a choice. Now, it does come with two free VPNs built in. I'm not sure uh, much about either one of them, but you can configure your own paid VPN as well. So if you actually are wanting, though, to use, um, if you are wanting to use a system that has integrates VPN with Tor, this might be a little bit of an easier option. Um, so if you flip on through and see the varieties, they have comparison lists, uh, how to use it, hints, security models, persistence, a lot of little little features inside of here. So of course they're comparing themselves in a standard product style sheet to Tails and oh, look how much better it is than Tails. In all fairness though, Tails does a lot of things infinitely better than this does. We'll do a comparative video between the two uh, soon. But of course, most of what we see is things like VPNs, there's node changers, um, Tails, you can change the nodes. Uh, you can't specifically rule out countries any longer. You used to be able to do that, unless it's a feature that's there. Uh, DNS options. Uh, there's a lot of other features. Uh, a lot of what it boils down to is there's just a ton of software integrated. That's either going to be a really good thing or a really bad thing. It kind of depends on where you're at. Now, uh, how to use it, they have a variety of different ways that you can use it. VM player, VirtualBox, they say it's slower in VirtualBox. We're going to be using it in VirtualBox. You know, why virtual machine? Why not VMware? It's called the license. Read the licenses of the two and you'll understand why I use VirtualBox. All right. Now, one of the another one of the, the downsides is that they are telling you that, hey, you need to download an external tool, whether universal USB installer or Etcher or Rufus or uh, Yummy to install this guy. Tails has its own installation process within it. Um, so which is an extra an extra line and measure of security. Again, I don't want to do a, a comparative video of the two here. Uh, we'll do that on a separate video. But with all that being said, there's uh, here's the the basic username. They do warn you if you install the system, don't change the username because a lot of the scripts are based on that username. Here's the password. There's no problem with changing the password. You can do the root password, which is the same. Uh, you can do various security models. So first you should know the VPN encrypts all your traffic, single point of, an of anonymization, <laughs> or it's a single point of failure if everybody's VPN traffic is all in the same place. Hmm. Uh, Tor or the Tor browser to encrypt only web browser traffic. Torified system encrypts all your traffic. Traffic uh, DNS script encrypts DNS queries. Uh, and then we have Tor DNS encrypts DNS queries. So really, there's some discussion, should you use Tor behind a VPN or not? And there's different people will say different things. So research that for sure. And I think Tails, um, either Tor or Tails has an official stance. I can't remember exactly what that official stance is. But they do have here best modes for using it anonymously versus uh, basic security. And I'm actually going to disagree with some of their stuff here, but for best anonymity, they say go to the ISP, then a, a VPN. Uh, there's virtual machines, Torified systems. So ISP, go to the VPN with the firewalls, go into the Tor, and then use the Kadashi browser. Um, so you can see all the various options here. And then they say here for security, 
post everything through your VPN. I am not a fan of using a VPN for doing a lot of the different uh, different types of things that I want as few companies in between me and them. Um, because your bank's software is going to be encrypted either way. The question is, can your ISP see what bank you're using, or is it the VPN company? Especially since this does have two free VPNs in, and remember that old saying, if you're not paying for it, you are the product. Something to keep in mind. They do have some things here about persistence. They do actually have warnings in here, don't Install persistence unless you're really, really careful because nothing is encrypted. Uh, so they do have some tools here about how to use that. They do give you warnings about it and a lot of different steps in there if you do want to install persistence. Again, not to compare them to, but Tails has a one-click install encrypted, Lux encrypted persistence. Uh, so... Again, they're selective on their comparative chart. Uh, Nuke, uh, where to use it, how to use it. So you can do the installation, legacy or EFI. You can install it on a main hard drive. I believe that's something you can't do on Tails. At least it's not as very easy to do. And so you have a few other notes and things. Now, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at what the distribution itself would happen to look like. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, boot this guy up into our desktop view. And on the first initial startup screen, we have some options. Do we want to go legacy live, full RAM mode, persistence, encrypted persistence, terminal text mode, forensics mode. So there's a few different options here that we can choose. So if you are wanting to use the system in different ways, you might use a persistence or encrypted persistence for some things, but want to stay on a full RAM for like a peer anonymity mode. You might do a forensics mode for other things. So we do have some good options uh, in here, making this a little bit more of an advanced system in that you need to know what you're trying to look for. But at the same token, uh, it is actually going to have a lot more tools and functions for you built in. Now, this is a much larger download because it is absolutely bloated with software. Um, almost, in my opinion, maybe even too much software. Um, again, that's one of the things Tails does a little bit differently is that they do curate software that they are absolutely certain is going to be perfectly safe and secure, but this comes with things that don't really have native Linux builds either. Um, so uh, we'll have a look at what the software is installed here when this boots up. It's not going to boot up in my virtual machine full screen. We'll go ahead and full screen it and then we'll be back. Okay, so here we've landed on the desktop and uh, the thing that we notice on the desktop that is actually really nice is we do have a nice status panel over here, which just disappeared as it's automatically changing font sizes around on me. So we have this nice status panel, which is giving us a lot of detailed information, including some network information here as well. We can see the status of your VPNs, which there's not one. Now, the documentation almost makes it sound like you boot this guy up and it's ready to go. They do say, hey, no Linux knowledge. You just boot this up and you're ready to go. And uh, that's not entirely the case because it does not boot up automatically connecting to a VPN, which makes sense because you'd probably want to use your own VPN. In this case here, you just boot up the VPN here and then they have a lot of scripts. So we have Kodashi VPN is a free one. We have uh, VPN gate is a free one. And then you can kind of set up your own VPN over here so you can configure your own setups. Let's go ahead and use the Kadashi free VPN. Now we have a nice little status panel over here in the lower right, which will give us our, um, all of our uh, stats. So we'll be able to see when the VPN is online. It's not online yet. Uh, we just get a notification that we are online. It says that we are in the United States. And uh, give it just a moment here, and it's going to start spitting out some um, VPN data here. It will should start giving me some signals there. We do have the ability. I just got to remember where it happens to be. You can tell it what places you'd like to be in. Here you go. This is under the tool tour tools. So I believe that these are various issues where you can click on one of these and it will specify your uh, it'll specify your your output um, country. So basically your your exit node country, which is important if you want to be on tour. Like this is something I do on my phone where I can generally set the uh, I set the exit node based on what I want. So it's a random IP address somewhere around the country that I want to be in. 
All right. Uh, if you did notice, we did have a little bit of signal on the VPN up there. Uh, let's see if I can find the VPN status up here. Almost looks like it's having difficulty connecting. Okay. Some ports. Okay, there it goes. So you can see the VPN status is, is now working. Now, we do have a lot of other, uh, other tools. We have down here, there's our donate. There's security evaluation. Learn how to increase it. Uh, Panic Room gives you a lot of tools related to your uh, just your network configurations. We have a MAC address tools. We can show and hide screen information if you want to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and hide the screen information um, for the rest of the video just because you know a public IP is over there and I like, like to uh, try as hard as I can to keep that off. So what I was talking about is an excess amount of software there is a ton of software on here that might actually be a little too much for some people. So it's this is kind of a hit and miss. It's, it's kind of like how much software do you want? How much software do you need? So some people are going to consider this bloat. Some people are going to consider this perfectly fine. We have a variety of different wallets up there. A few other tools. Security services. All right, security applications. We have Signal, Wire, Tox, Ring, Riot, Bettergram, ZuluCrypt. Again, some of these, um, like, I don't know, is there a native Signal app? I, I know I've always installed that with a flat pack when I wanted to test with it. Um, I don't remember off the top. Um, but we have all those software there. Let's see, here's... Um, DNS tools, so we can do a variety of different DNS tools over here. Okay. Tor nodes, VPN tools. Now over here we have a few different browsers. We have a light browser, we have a loaded browser, Ghacks browser, we have Sphere Tor browser, we have the basic Tor browser, and we have a Firefox unsafe. Now since we're connected on a VPN right now, if I were to go into the unsafe browser, it would actually not display my real IP address. We do have the Tor browser set up here as well. We can show the desktop application finder. See what our application finder is going to do. All right. So this is kind of giving us a list of all the applications that we have. So you can see we just have a boatload, a boatload of different applications here. Um, again, it's either going to be too much or too little, or, you know, it depends on, on the individual person. So that's for you to decide for yourself. So here we have Tor is set up. Let's see if this gives us a warning about full screening the browser or not. Are you working Mr. Tor? There you go. So yeah, so it does warn us not to full screen the browser because that can in theory be fingerprinted. All right. Hopefully, uh, the Tor browser is set up to not allow that fingerprinting. It should have the ability to do that. But what is my IP? Everything on the system is set to go DuckDuckGo instead of Google or things. So that's actually a really good security thing. Uh, so you are actually going to have some some good uh, good systems there in place. Okay, this is definitely not my IP address. So you can kind of see where we are at from there. All right, so uh, that is pretty much what we have. Um, again, it is not nearly as easy to use. It does seem like it has a lot more things, but if you are into fine-tuning your system, this will have the, the more configurable options. So I would say if you really do know what you're doing inside of the security world, uh, Kadashi might be a little bit better for you. If you're unsure and you're just kind of wanting to get into it maybe you're wanting to to look up the symptoms of the current thing running around our world without your ip uh isp or without google or whatever else knowing what you're doing you know booting up on tails might be the better option if you're looking for a more simple operating system tails i would say is a better option uh this one here though does have a lot of things going for it the ability to easily configure your vpns the tools all here uh, it does run on the xfce desktop of course as you can see and the the setup the configuration of it is actually very nice so I do actually like it. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I might want to poke around, prod around with it a little bit more. 
uh, see if it's uh, better than Tails or not. I still like some of the things Tails does a little bit better. And again, though, we'll address those when we do a comparative video soon looking at Kodashi versus Tails. Maybe we'll bring in a, a uh, anonymy, uh, anonymous based distro wars against that. Let me know if that'd be an interest to you in the comments. Overall though, it is a very good system. I don't see a massive reason not to. It is based on Ubuntu. I did check there are no snaps installed by default, although Snap itself is installed uh, for those curious about that. But with all that, uh, let me know your thoughts on this guy. Have a look at it. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and leave a link to the website in the, the description down here. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below.